Welcome to Encounter. I'm Reverend Price. I want you to think about the kingdom of God. Perhaps you've heard it before. You've heard the message of salvation preached, but perhaps you ignored it because you didn't understand the importance of the kingdom to your life. Perhaps you thought that you had more time to dedicate to the things that matter to you, to the parties, to Lyman, to your own aspirations. And so the church and Jesus Christ was at the back. But I want you to think about the kingdom of God because Jesus makes some important statements about the kingdom that pertain to your life. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 to 45, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. When a man finds it, he hides it. Then he sells everything that he has. And then he pays for that land so that the treasure will be his. And then in verse 45, he says that the kingdom of God is like a pearl. That man who finds that pearl, he sells everything that he has. And then he buys that pearl. Pearl. Now what do these two verses have to do with your life? Jesus says that the man finds the treasure, the man finds the pearl, and he sells everything that he has in order to get that pearl, to get that treasure. Those two verses tell me three things about the kingdom of God and about your life. The first is that the kingdom of God is precious. The second is that the kingdom of God is priceless. And the third is that the kingdom of God is personal. You see, it is precious in the sense that this man, he had money, he had a lot of things, but he gave up everything that he had in order to get this precious thing called salvation, this precious thing called the kingdom of heaven. There is no price that you can put on the kingdom of heaven. There's absolutely no price that you can put on your salvation. What do you think? Do you think that you have time? Do you think that time waits on you? That you're in control of life? Let me tell you, if we look around the world, we see that there's so many people who are dying. There's so many people who have lost their lives and didn't get an opportunity to repent. Don't let that be your situation. Jesus Christ has come to give life and life more abundantly. He's come to give you the kingdom of God. He's come to reunite you and to bring you back into a relationship with God. So the fact that he gave his life for you tells you how precious it is, how priceless it is that you can have salvation, that you can have the kingdom of God, that you can have eternal life with him in heaven. Don't let the devil blind your eyes so that you cannot see the fullness, the beauty, the magnificence of what Jesus Christ died on the cross, arose again from the grave to give to you. Next, the kingdom of heaven is priceless. The man in those two stories, he gave up everything he had. He sold everything so that he could have that which he could not otherwise get. You see, if you want the kingdom of God, you have to give up your life. You have to lay down your life so that you can get the life of God that is available to you. You see, there's a transfer. It's either you want the world or you want God. It's priceless. Finally, it's personal. It's personal in the sense that every single person has to make a choice. I can't make it for you and you can't make it for someone else. Today, I want to implore you to make the choice for salvation. If you want salvation, if you want the kingdom, if you want to lay down your life to serve God, pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness. I want to receive the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. I know that you love me and gave yourself for me. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and making me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you pray that word, you are forgiven. God bless you. And remember, hold on to the kingdom.